Hello, fellow justice seekers, in particular for Travis Alexander on this specific rant, whatever you want to call it, that I am about to do or that I am doing right now. I have been a part of the State versus Jody Arias page on Facebook now for pretty much however long the trial has been going on, which I guess would be um, two months or something. I could be off. But anyway, I've been a part of it for a while, and I've checked on it daily. I might sound obsessive or whatever, but I really am captivated, captivated, captivated by this trial, like many are, by the crazy twists and turns and lies and just that, the abundance of evidence against Jody Arias. You know, they've always said, like, the best evidence you could have would be caught on camera. Well, literally, that's the evidence we have in this case. But because of Jody's beauty and her eloquence and just all of the uh, quirks in this case, she was, a, you know, it got became high profile. So now they've had excessive time to come up with an elaborate tale and... The defense team I'm, I'm referring to has had all this time to come up with an elaborate tale to try and somehow make this caught on camera evidence uh, meaningless. So anyway, um, I, have, I have been very confident in uh, the jury leaning more towards a guilty verdict for first degree premeditated murder on Jody's behalf and that was until yesterday with certain jury questions that they had for the new, well, she, she, I guess you could still call her new. She's been testifying now for a couple of days. Her name is Dr. Janine DeMarte, and she's testifying for the prosecution. She's the psychiatrist or psychologist, I believe, psychiatrist, psychologist, psychologist, excuse me. And um, anyway, she really presented herself just very straightforward. A lot of people keep saying that she's completely unbiased, that they didn't detect any bias, but I disagree. I wouldn't so much though call it a bias. I would say that she's definitely pro-Travis um, based on what she said, but she stuck to the facts. She wasn't just being biased because someone was paying her to be biased, like as with Miss LaViolette's case. This is different. She's she's actually, um, I would say she has a preference in this trial, and it's not money interest. Uh, it's not the, for the interest of making money. It's for the interest of justice and logic. Because <laughs> if you have a logical brain, um, everything that the defense is throwing out there contradicts logic, uh, defies logic. So, um, but anyway, so yeah. Uh, yesterday's jury questions. Let's see. I have the. Travis Alexander page up, which so many people on the page are, and it's it's definitely uh, uplifting when people um, try to excuse some of the juror questions from yesterday and make it out to be as though they're still pro Travis. But I I don't know. It's it, I really have my doubts, and just like with the, I mean, you have to remember, even though they're not sequestered jury, they're still kept in a bubble. And if they really are abiding by the law, then they're not um, subjected to all of the evidence that we as the public are right now with media and uh, just go, we can just go to docstock.com and pretty much read everything. We even were had access to Jody's uh, conduct while she's been in jail, which has been pretty bad, especially compared to like Casey Anthony's. She's, she's been a typical narcissistic uh, brat while in jail being, you know, lying, stealing, things like that. So I think that's telling. But anyway, you know what I'm saying there? And, and we've had evidence to um, Travis's uh, ex-female friends who never actually testified in court, who testified to the public um, as to how Jody would get jealous so easily, even so much so that she cornered uh, a, a female friend of Travis is in the bathroom in a very threatening way, which so shows her ability to be more than assertive, which the defense to this day argues that Jody is not. But anyway, so back to the juror questions. <clears throat> I'm just going to go down the list. Let's see. The first one was, how many forensic cases have you worked on? The second one was, how many times have you testified based on your forensic evaluations? And the third one was, how many cases involved abuse? Well, all three of those questions are showing doubt uh, as it pertains to Mrs. DeMar or Miss DeMarte's 
credentials and her knowledge and her skill. And that isn't good. That means, first of all, if I were a juror, DeMarte's knowledge wouldn't even matter to me in this murder trial. Because basically, she her job was to assess Jody as to a mental disorder. Post-traumatic stress disorder and uh, borderline personality disorder. They're both disorders, but they are not insanity. They do not reveal an insane mind. They're sane. They're rational. Well, not always rational, but they are, they know right from wrong. They don't have any mental deficiency that is going to cause them to all of a sudden turn sociopathic, in other words, into a murderer. And so if I were a juror, I would be thinking, you know, regardless of this young psychologist's credentials or lack thereof, I'm not going to make a determination as to whether or not Jody premeditated this murder based on whether or not she has a diagnosis of PTSD or borderline personality disorder. That really would not matter to me in the grand scheme of things because neither of those excuse nor justify premeditated murder, which it has been more than proven that this murder was premeditated. And anyone who argues otherwise is either illogical or they're just choosing to see that way despite all the evidence. But okay, so let's see the fourth question hypothetically. Okay, so that one doesn't really matter. Sorry, I'm just going down and reading these real quick because there was another one that kind of was like, uh, I don't see why that really matters. Um, of course, number nine, wouldn't taking the camera rather than leaving it show more organizational thinking capabilities? Some people were reverting that back to Dr. Samuel's testimony and saying that that was more in cahoots with that testimony and I don't know about that though. I'm not so sure about that because either way they're arguing their their mindset is that she was sloppy with leaving the camera behind and therefore did not premeditate this murder, which isn't good. Either way you look at it, it's not good. That question because um as the psychologist Demarte stated, throwing it in the washing machine showed that she was trying to literally clean away, wash away evidence. And, and also, as she said, most people, myself included, and I fancy myself an amateur photographer, would assume that if the memory card got soaking wet, that the evidence would be damaged. I mean, I've had cameras and memory cards get damaged from water before, so that's probably what she thought. That is is what the average person would think. But, you know, I guess the jurors are just thinking extra... Um, they're they're psychoanalyzing things which they should but in this case it's it's they're kind of defying logic here because once again throwing a camera in the washing machine she could have just left it out why put it in the washing machine and then Jennifer Wilmot trying to proceeding to say that well how do we know Jody put it in the washing machine really okay anyway I'm going to keep scrolling down and look at the other questions real quick um and that do you consider Jody stabbing, shooting, and slitting Travis's throat to be a traumatic event? Okay, while I will say that I'm glad they put emphasis on everything that Jody did by writing out shooting, stabbing, and slitting Travis's throat, I think that was good for the juror to throw that into the question. It made it a lot more real and intense. Um, still, them asking point blank if the doctor would consider that a traumatic event shows me that they're alluding to the fact that they see a possibility in her having post-traumatic stress disorder. So I I don't really like that question either. Okay, so I'm going to read some more. Okay, so the rest... The rest of the questions weren't really that. Um, there were still some more that pertained to her, uh, to the doctor's lack of knowledge on certain tests and whatnot. But you know what? My aunt, my aunt, for over 25 years now, has been uh, doing, has been a, not a, well, she's got her doctorate. She's been, um, excuse me, she's a, she is a doctor, but she, and she works on mental health patients. And, um, 
but she's not a psychologist, if that makes sense. Like, she works at a huge main hospital in the city, but they always have her on the floor with the mental patients. So I'm not sure exactly what her exact title is, but it's up there. It's one of the top people. Anyway, to this day, despite all of her years of studies, she still can't remember a lot of the, the abbreviations and acronyms and whatnot for certain uh, a di uh, um, a diagnosis or a uh, dis or a um, test or you know like a little a lot of those things. I mean, even scientists who study um, uh, certain um, what is the word I'm looking for? Uh, you know, they deal with certain equations and um, symbols and or not symbols, but just mathematic. Um, I'm just going to, I'm sorry, I'm, my kids are starting to get loud, so I'm, my mind is shifting. But you, you get what I'm saying. People in certain professions who are more than knowledgeable on the topic at hand, they still, a lot of times, because they're, they have such a, um, a, a, a library of knowledge in their brains, they, it's harder for them to just pick out every single thing without referring to notes or whatever. And so to just look at somebody wanting to look back at their notes as... Be, as, as lacking in knowledge on the topic, I feel like that is not fair. I mean, there are many people who have great memories and they can remember every little abbreviation and yet when it comes to the actual um, study of psychology, they're just not as good because after all, psychology is an abstract type of study. It's, it's based on emotion, it's based on perspective, it's based on um, just intuition a lot of times and uh, relativity and empathy. It's based on a lot of things like that. Patterns, looking at patterns. A lot of that really is not um, attributed to the ability to memorize abbreviations and stuff like that. So I, I don't know. I just... These juror questions do worry me. This is the first time I can say that throughout this whole trial. It wasn't until the 50th day that I, I feel let down. And the same thing happened with the Casey Anthony trial. When all of my friends, my staunch, like, anti-Casey friends were like, she's going to get a guilty verdict. There was just one day I was watching the trial. And although they couldn't ask jury questions in that trial, it was the way Jose in that bubble, in that courtroom, that bubble I call it because they're only subjected to limited information, they were so convincing. And I feel like right now... The distraction, sorry, hold on. Hold on, baby. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, what I was saying was, is I feel like that this, dis I feel like this distraction that has been created now, and that's the whole point with usually a defense team, is they want to cause a distraction. If there's too much evidence against the defendant, then really all the defense can do is distract. They can't really disprove. They can only distract. And that's what they've done. I would say at this point in the trial, they have become successful at, at distracting because those juror questions are not even concerned really with the facts anymore that matter anyway. The facts that matter are the facts um, proving Jody's premeditation, the murder itself, and how Jody acted thereafter. That's what matters. All the questions that the jurors asked this last time showed that they're putting concern in areas that don't really matter. In the grand scheme of things, they don't really matter uh, as to what uh, would determine Jody's sentence or her punishment that she deserves. And this distraction, um, I really do feel like I could really um, alter what I once thought would be the verdict in this case. So I just wanted to share that. I'm not trying to be a downer. This is just really how I see it. And I'm <laughs> just being realistic. I was, I've usually been spot on with every trial I've ever gotten into, which has been a lot. And I just don't like the certain jury questions. Hopefully the jurors who, or the juror, we don't know if it was one or two or three or whatever, who asked these um, questions that are worrying me, hopefully these people are more weak-minded and they'll be more swayed by the stronger jurors when they're able to deliberate together. Hopefully they won't be the ones uh, that are the more strong-minded ones able to persuade and stuff. So we'll just see how it turns out. And yeah, so <laughs> thanks for listening.